Good evening and welcome to Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church worship service for Good Friday. This is a worship service when we remember that God is good. And we also remember when Jesus is crucified. So this is a serious worship service. It's a, it can be a difficult worship service when, as we reflect and remember the story of Jesus' suffering and death. So we ask that you take time to focus on this worship service, um, to limit your distractions, and set aside about an hour for this worship service. At different points in the service, there will be some darkness, and then the lights will come back up. And at the end, the lights will uh, be mostly dark um, when we leave um, worship. And we ask that at home, too, you honor some silence and time to reflect um, before you jump into the next big activity in your life. So let us enter into worship. A reading of the Passion of our Lord from Gospel of Mark. In the garden, after praying, Jesus was still speaking with Peter, James, and John. When Judas the betrayer came up, he was one of the twelve disciples. A mob of men armed with swords and clubs were with him. They had been sent by the chief priests, the nation's leaders, and the teachers of the Law of Moses. Judas had told them ahead of time, Arrest the man that I greet with a kiss. Tie him up tight and lead him away. Judas walked right up to Jesus and said, Teacher. Then Judas kissed him. And the men grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Someone standing there pulled out a sword. He struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus said to the mob, Why do you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a criminal? Day after day I was with you and taught in the temple, and you did not arrest me. But what the scriptures say must come true. All of Jesus' disciples ran off and left Jesus with the mob. One of them was a young man who was wearing only a linen cloth. And when the men grabbed him, he left the cloth behind and ran away naked. Jesus was led off to the high priest.
Then the chief priests, the nation's leaders, and the teachers of the law of Moses all met together. Peter had followed at a distance. And when he reached the courtyard of the high priest's house, he sat down with the guards to warm himself beside a fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find someone to accuse Jesus of a crime so they could put him to death. But they could not find anyone to accuse him. Many people did tell lies against Jesus, but they did not agree on what they said. Finally, some men stood up and lied about him. They said, we heard him say he would tear down this temple that was built. He also claimed that in three days he would build another one without any help. But even then, they did not agree on what they said. The high priest stood up in the council and asked Jesus, Why don't you say something in your own defense? Don't you hear the charges they are making against you? But Jesus kept quiet and did not say a word. The high priest asked him another question. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the glorious God? Jesus answered, I am. Soon you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right side of God, all powerful, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At once the high priest ripped his robe apart and shouted, Why do we need more witnesses? You heard his claim to be God. What is your decision? They all agreed that he should be put to death. Some of the people started spitting on Jesus. They blindfolded him and hit him with their fists and said, Tell us who hit you. Then the guards took charge of Jesus and beat him. While Peter was still in the courtyard, a servant girl of the high priest came up and saw Peter warming himself by the fire. She stared at him and said, You were with Jesus from Nazareth. Peter replied, That isn't true. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any idea what you mean. He went out to the gate, and a rooster crowed. The servant girl saw Peter again, and said to the people standing there, This man is one of them. No, I am not, Peter replied. A while later, some of the people said to Peter, You certainly are one of them. You are a Galilean. This time Peter began to curse and swear, I don't even know the man you're talking about. Right away the rooster crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had told him, Before a rooster crows twice, you will say three times, that you do not know me. So Peter started crying.
Early the next morning, the chiefs priests, the nation's leaders, and the teachers of the Law of Moses met together with the whole Jewish council. They tied up Jesus and led him off to Pilate, the highest ranking Roman official in Judea. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Those are your words, Jesus answered. The chief priests brought many charges against Jesus. Then Pilate questioned him again. Don't you have anything to say? Don't you hear what crimes they are say you have done? But Jesus did not answer. And Pilate was amazed. During Passover, Pilate always freed one prisoner chosen by the people. And at that time, there was a prisoner named Barabbas. He and some others had been arrested for a murder during a riot. The chief priests told the crowd to ask Pilate to free Barabbas. And the crowd now came and asked Pilate to set a prisoner free, just as he usually did. Pilate knew that the chief priests had brought Jesus to him because they were jealous. So Pilate asked them, do you want me to free the king of the Jews? And the people demanded, Barabbas, Barabbas. Then Pilate asked the crowd, what do you want me to do with this man you say is the king of Jews? And the people answered, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate asked, but what crime has he done? And the people demanded, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free. Then he ordered his soldiers to beat Jesus with a whip and nail him to a cross. The soldiers led Jesus inside the courtyard of the fortress. called together the rest of the troops. They put a purple robe on him, and on his head they placed a crown that they had made out of thorn branches. They made fun of Jesus and shouted, Hey, you king of the Jews! And then they beat him on the head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt down and pretended to worship him. When the soldiers had finished making fun of Jesus, they took off the purple robe. They put his own clothes back on him and led him off to be nailed to a cross.
Simon from Cyrene happened to be coming in from a farm. And they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. And now take time at home to honor and respect the cross. To either bow down before it or to touch a cross in your home. and to pause or kneel for prayer. You have prepared a cross for the Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The soldiers took Jesus to Golgotha, which means place of a skull. There they gave him some wine mixed with a drug to ease the pain, but he refused to drink it. 
They nailed Jesus to a cross. And gambled to see who would get his clothes. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they nailed him to the cross. On it was a sign that told why he was nailed there. It read, this is the king of the Jews. The soldiers also nailed two criminals on the crosses, one of them to the right of Jesus and the other to his left. People who passed by said terrible things about Jesus. They shook their heads and shouted, Ha! So you're the one who claimed you could tear down the temple and build it again in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses also made fun of Jesus. They said to each other, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. If he is the Messiah, the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross. Then we will see and believe. The two criminals also said cruel things to Jesus. About noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until around three o'clock. Then around that time, Jesus shouted, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Some of the people standing there heard Jesus and said, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran and grabbed a sponge. After he had soaked it in wine, he put it on a stick and held it up to Jesus. He said, let's wait and see if Elijah will come and take him down. Jesus shouted, breathed his last breath, and Jesus died. At once, the curtain in the temple tore in two from top to bottom. A Roman army officer was standing in front of Jesus. When the officer saw how Jesus died, he said, This man was really the Son of God. Some women were looking on from a distance. They had come with Jesus to Jerusalem. But even before this, they had been his followers and helped him while he was in Galilee. 
Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, were two of these women. Salome was also one of them. It was now the evening before the Sabbath, and the Jewish people were getting ready for that sacred day. A man named Joseph was brave enough to ask Pilate for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a highly respected member of the Jewish council, and he was also waiting for God's kingdom to come. Pilate was surprised to find out that Jesus was already dead. And he called in the army officer to find out if Jesus had been dead very long. After the officer told him, Pilate let Joseph have Jesus' body. Joseph brought a linen cloth and took the body down from the cross. He had Jesus' body wrapped in the cloth, and he put it in a tomb that had been cut into solid rock. Then he rolled a big stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and saw where the body was placed. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why are you so far away? Won't you listen to my cries and come to my rescue? I cry out day and night. For you do not answer, and I can never rest. Yet you are the holy God, ruling from your throne and praised by Israel. Our ancestors trusted you, and you rescued them. When they cried out for help, you saved them. And you did not let them down when they depended on you. But I am merely a worm, far less than human. And I am hated and rejected by people everywhere. Everyone who sees me makes fun and sneers. They shake their heads and say, Trust the Lord. If you are the Lord's favorite, then let the Lord protect you and keep you safe. You, Lord, brought me safely through birth, and you protected me when I was a baby at my mother's breast. 
From the day I was born, I have been in your care. And from the time of my birth, you have been my God. Don't stay far off when I'm in trouble with no one to help me. Enemies are all around like a herd of bulls. Powerful bulls are everywhere. My enemies are like lions roaring and attacking with jaws open wide. I have no more strength than a few drops of water. All my bones are out of joint, and my heart is melted like wax. My strength has dried up like a broken clay pot, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You, God, have left me to die in the dirt. Brutal enemies attack me like a pack of dogs, tearing at my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. And my enemies just stare and sneer at me. They took my clothes and gambled for them. Don't stay far away, Lord. My strength comes from you. So hurry and help. Rescue me from enemy swords and save me from those dogs. Don't let lions eat me. You rescued me from the horns of wild bulls. And when your people meet, I will praise you, Lord. All who worship the Lord, now praise the Lord. You belong to Jacob's family and to the people of Israel. So fear and honor the Lord. The Lord doesn't hate or despise the helpless in all of their trouble. When I cried out, the Lord listened and did not turn away. When your people meet, you will fill my heart with your praises, Lord, and everyone will see me keep my promises to you. The poor will eat and be full and all who worship you will be thankful and live in hope. Everyone on this earth will remember you, Lord. People all over the world will turn and worship you because you are in control. the ruler of all nations. All who are rich and have more than enough will bow down to you, Lord. Even those who are dying and almost in the grave will come and bow down. In the future, everyone will worship and learn about you, our Lord. People not yet born will be told 
the Lord has saved us.